Welcome to I'm Your Target Demographic. Today we're covering a religious topic a little bit more in depth. Today we're looking at the 12 apostles, or sometimes called the 12 disciples of Jesus Christ. During the story of the gospel, these were the 12 closest friends and followers of Jesus, but you might not know a lot about these people, so we're going to recap who the 12 were and what we might know about them. So what does the word apostle mean? The closest English translation is something like messenger, someone you'd send out with a message, but also something like a delegate, representing a person or a cause. So in this context, the apostles were sent out with a message and representing Jesus Christ. So as we talk about these 12 apostles, we're going to find their stories in four books of the New Testament referred to as the Gospels. Four of the apostles wrote these books based on their experiences. So we have the books of Mark, John, Luke, and Matthew. There may be some inconsistencies in these books, usually believed to be due to their different experiences and context for the events in which they were witnessing. There's also some debate about who wrote the different books, if it was truly them or someone writing about them. In these books, we learn about the apostles and how they became connected to Jesus. While often the stories seem to have Jesus meeting the apostles for the first time, others might allude to some of the apostles knowing Jesus before such as a shared connection to John the Baptist, who himself baptized Jesus Christ. Remember that John the Baptist is not the same John who wrote the gospel and that we're going to talk about here. The first apostles that Jesus recruited were four men who were fishing, Peter, Andrew, James, and John. Let's start with Peter. Peter is specifically mentioned that his original name was Simon, or sometimes spelled Simeon, but that Jesus gave him the name Peter instead. We see this a few times, usually indicative of a major character change. It's referenced that Peter had a wife and maybe even children. This is debated, but it's clear that Peter was fishing with his brother Andrew when Jesus came across them both. Throughout the Gospels, Peter has a few significant moments, including when he witnesses Jesus walking on water and he attempts to do the same, though his lack of faith at the moment causes him to fall into the lake. He also denied Jesus three times in the events of the crucifixion. Following the death and resurrection of Jesus, Peter was sent out on missionary trips across the region, one of the most major evangelical forces at the time. His leadership of the early church forms the basis of what is now known as apostolic succession, in which apostles consecrate and make others valid. So some churches today claiming apostolic succession often go back to Peter. Apostolic succession is very important to some churches, such as Catholic and Orthodox churches, though most Protestant churches don't see the need for this. Back to Peter. His death is not clear, but it's believed that he died via crucifixion at the hands of the Romans, sometimes even shown as being crucified upside down. The Basilica of St. Peter in Vatican City is believed to be built over his burial place. Now with Peter, his brother Andrew also joined Jesus. Following spreading the gospel after the resurrection, Andrew was crucified in the city of Patras in Greece. Though he didn't believe himself to be worthy and to be crucified in the same fashion, so he was crucified on an X-shaped cross, now known as a St. Andrew's cross. In Patras, there now sits the Basilica of St. Andrew, where his remains and relics have been kept. When we learn about Peter and Andrew giving up fishing to join Jesus, we also learn of two other brothers, James and John. There were two James with this one being James the Great, with great meaning older. James is shown to have quite a temper in the Gospels, even asking Jesus to rain down fire on a Samaritan village that did not welcome him. Jesus, of course, did not. James is martyred in the pages of Acts, beheaded by a king named Herod. Following his death, James became the patron saint of Spain, though there are conflicting theories as to why. Some believe that James might have spread the gospel through Spain before returning to Judea where he was executed. There are conflicting theories as to why and how this could have happened. And his remains are believed to be kept in Santiago de Compostela in Spain, though how they got there again is up for debate. James had a little brother that was also an apostle, John. Like his brother James, he also had a temper. Jesus even went so far as to call the brothers what is translated as sons of thunder. Following the death and resurrection, John had a vital role in spreading of the gospel, as he's the only apostle believed to have died of old age, so he had time to share and lay the foundation for the modern church. It's also believed that John wrote other books in the New Testament, including the book of Revelations. Like almost everything, this is hotly debated. 
John is a common name, so some believe that multiple Johns wrote these books. And John's Gospel also has some drastic differences between the other Gospels, because he might have written this decades after the others, since he lived so long. Let's move to Matthew, who is also referenced as Levi in two of the Gospels. We believe that these are the same person. We get an occupation for this apostle, who is a tax collector who immediately gives up his job and invites Jesus and his apostles to a meal. Tax collectors were seen as villains, and so this was an instance of Jesus taking time with and talking to people otherwise looked down upon at the time. His life after the resurrection isn't delved into with detail, though it's believed his missions led him to places like modern-day Iran and Ethiopia. Now let's cover Thomas. The story you may know is where Thomas is in doubt at the resurrection of Jesus, giving him the name Doubting Thomas. Paraphrasing, Thomas would only believe that Jesus had risen from the dead when he could see and feel the wounds himself. Well, Jesus appeared and showed him. Now, sent out into the world, Thomas is believed to have ventured as far as India to spread the gospel, and his body is buried under what is now called the St. Thomas Cathedral Basilica. We now move to Philip. There is not a lot known about the life of Philip before and after the events of the New Testament. It's also easy to confuse the Apostle Philip with a prominent evangelist also called Philip. There is a letter, believed to be written by Peter to Philip, that asks Philip to return to the group of the other apostles, alluding that Philip had left on his own for some time, though we're not sure why. There isn't a definite answer as to how Philip died, though there are stories of crucifixion. We also have Bartholomew, who's often referenced with Philip, and they may have been introduced to Jesus at around the same time. Following the resurrection, Bartholomew is believed to have gone into India and ended up in the region near Armenia and Turkey. His cause of death is unsure, but some claim that he was flayed alive and beheaded after he had converted the then king of Armenia to Christianity. I mentioned earlier that there were two James. The second James was often called James the Less, since he was younger. There is very little written about him. He usually only appears in lists of the apostles by name. We also have the problem of too many Jameses, so several characters may have been confused. So even his post-resurrection spreading of the gospel is unsure. Next up, we have Simon the Zealot, or so he's called. He's called the Zealot in the list of apostles to distinguish from Simon who becomes Peter. He's often tied to Jude, another apostle, as they supposedly ventured across Armenia, Egypt, and Lebanon. As usual, both his and Jude's deaths are unsure, but a popular theory is that they were martyred in Lebanon, and both of their remains are supposedly kept in St. Peter's Basilica now. The last of the original Twelve Apostles is Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed Jesus and then hung himself as told in the book of Matthew. Judas was replaced by an apostle named Matthias, and this is interesting in that his calling was not made by Jesus. As Jesus had already ascended, he seems to have been in the crowds following and supporting Jesus, but was only called up to be among the apostles following Judas's betrayal. We also have an apostle who wasn't even one of the twelve apostles, but you might have assumed that he was. And that is Paul, generally regarded as a vital pillar of the early days of the church, but he was actually opposing the original apostles and wanted them jailed, going then by the name Saul. Another example of a new name for a new life. The ascended Jesus appeared to him and blinded him for three days, changing the course of Paul's life forever. Paul wrote many of the books, about 14 of the New Testament, before he was beheaded by Romans and is believed to be buried under the Basilica of St. Paul outside the walls in Rome. It exists in Italy, but the Vatican has full ownership of this site. Now I know that's a brief overview. Some of the apostles have much deeper stories, stories that are contested and debated among historians and theologians. But hopefully this was an interesting starting place. Thanks for watching.